friends, welcome back or welcome if you're new. My name is Emma and this is Emma's Cottage. In today's tutorial, it's a continuation of the My Craft Source Christmas Kit box. If you guys were able to get your hands on one, awesome. We're gonna craft today. Hopefully you guys can craft along with me as I make mine. Today is day three, so we are making do-it-yourself snow globes. The one thing that I really like about today's craft is that you can totally personalize it. In fact, any of the crafts that came in that box, you can completely personalize and put your own little spin on it. So I will be putting a little bit of my own little spin on this one today um, because not everything came in the box. So a lot of times you kind of have to be resourceful and figure out what do you have in stock or what can you go quickly purchase. So some of the things that did not come in the box was the mason jar, which I don't have a mason jar, but I do have something similar, which I thought this was super cute. I got this from Hobby Lobby for like $4.50. In fact, I think I got it half off because I always go when they're having their specials. The most important part is that it has a wider mouth, which this one definitely does. Um, and then you're gonna need some fishing line. I know I've got some of that out in the garage. And then it says you need some glow in the dark acrylic paint in yellow and neutral, as well as navy acrylic paint and then a hot glue gun. So I don't have those colors of paint, but guess what? I've got lots of different options back here. So let's see, I know that I've got, what I was thinking of is these paint pens. I got from a craft, one of my local craft stores. So I'm gonna use these paint pens today. So the first part of the instruction says that you need to start by painting your star wood blanks with glow yellow acrylic and your moon wood blank with glow neutral acrylic. So what we're talking about is these cute little um, wood blanks here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start painting them by hand with these cool little markers. Now they're not glow in the dark, but guess what I do have? I do have some glow in the dark SEA, SEI tie dye spray. So once these dry, I'm just gonna do a quick spray with this and let it dry and I think it'll be just fine, but we'll see. So one thing I like to do whenever I paint, I just have something underneath. So you could either use butcher paper. In my case, I'm just using a sheet of parchment paper. And I think I wanna paint both sides of these. So I always like to shake them up before I use them. And then sometimes you have to push down on them a few times. Oh man, I may have tried this out. <sighs> oh no, these might be too old. Let's take this one. That's what it should sound like. Oh man, I may have tried these out, you guys. All right, I gotta improvise because I pulled those markers down and they're so old, they dried up. So I'm gonna improvise and I'm gonna use different colors, which is fine, because I have a lot of different, hopefully these haven't dried out too, a lot of cute little different acrylic paints. So we're just gonna use these and they're gonna work out just fine. Let's see, which paintbrush do I wanna use? I'm gonna use this one. So I just got a packet of paintbrushes I always keep a packet on hand because there's always some sort of project that I'm going to do. So I'm just gonna use this paintbrush here and the yellow is going to be for the stars. And then I was thinking of doing the yellow for the moon too, but I think what I'm gonna do is probably mix it a little bit with this linen white. This is the Starcraft chalk and mineral paint. So let's start off by doing the stars first. And I'm just using a piece of parchment paper to help keep it clean. Guaranteed my fingers are gonna get dirty though. Adorable. I'm gonna go through and just do one coat on each of these. Now you could do lots of different coats, but I kind of like, um, sometimes with the wood look, I kind of like to be able to see the wood grain through the color. So mine's gonna be a very light coat, but you guys can do it however you'd like. Cute. And if you wanted to do the sides, I think I just might. I'm doing such a light coat that this definitely is not gonna take very long to dry. Ta-da! Just gonna set that there and let the top dry so that then I'll flip it and I'll do the other side. Okay, my stars are painted. Now I need to do the moon, but I definitely want to dim it up just a tad. I'm gonna grab a different paintbrush so that I can mix a little bit of that yellow with some of this cream. Again, just be resourceful, use what you got. Definitely a much more muted yellow by adding in that cream. 
You can see I'm doing a very light coat because I want it to dry really quick. And if you do a really thick coat, it's gonna take a lot longer for it to dry. Have fun with this, you guys. Let your fingers get dirty, get paint all over you. This is what's so fun about crafting. Don't take yourself too serious and just have fun. Ooh, I'm getting messy, having so much fun. Okay, who's having fun? Who's doing this with me? Curious if you guys are doing it right along with me or if you're gonna watch it first and then go back. I'm telling you, you guys, if you guys purchase this kit and you guys are crafting along with me, please follow me in the Facebook group and which is Emma's Cottage DIY and show me, show me how you kind of made it your own and what yours ended up looking like. I'm so excited to see what everybody's imaginations create. <laughs> show me a picture of your messy fingers. Ugh, that one stuck to me. Now keep in mind, these are hanging from the inside. So don't take yourself too serious. Like they don't need to be super perfect. They're gonna be hanging from fish line on the inside of your jar. So believe me, nobody's gonna be looking at it with a fine tooth comb saying, oh my goodness, she doesn't know how to paint. No, no, it's not gonna happen. Like this is just a fun craft along activity and it's gonna turn out adorable. I'm so excited to see. So cute. Keep oh no, fell down. So cute. You need to do a few more layers. Go ahead and do a few more layers. But like I said, I kind of like it when the paint, or sorry, when the wood shows through a little bit. Gives it a little bit of like a rustic look. How's our moon looking? Our moon's looking adorable. So cute. Okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna wash my hands. Oops, fell over again. Oops. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine everyone, it's fine. Oh, I'm kind of messed that up. Ta-da! All right, we're gonna let those dry. We're gonna clean up some of this paint. I'm gonna wash my hands really fast. And then we need to paint the top of this lid. Oh! Here we are in Cricut Design Space. As you can see, I've already uploaded the SVG file for day three. It did come all uh, grouped together. I ungrouped it and then grouped them separate because I'm gonna do something a little bit on my own. So like we measured, um, it's five and a half feet tall. So if I wanted to do like a template, let's just go ahead and create our own template. We're going to unlock the dimensions and I want it five, I think it was 5.5 high. And then it was 14 wide all the way around. We're going to go ahead and change this to like maybe a light gray. We're going to put it, I'm going to send it to the back. And then this way we can kind of see how this is going to be laid out. So I kind of wanted to switch this up a bit as well. So this, I'm going to ungroup and then I'm going to group each word together. So I'm going to grab the night. I'm going to group it. I'm going to grab the holy. Oh, look, holy's already grouped. And then the O, I need to group that one. Okay. So then I can kind of move it around how I want it. Oh, look, there's an I. I don't need a dot to the I. Let's go put it over there and group it again. Here we go. And now it's with it. All right. So what I was thinking is I kind of want the trees wrapped all the way around. You can see there's uh, a whole bunch of different trees on here, all in different layers. But I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate and move them over. And probably the best way to do this to match it up all the way around is maybe take off some of these trees on the edge. So let's grab this one. I'm going to... Oh, why is it not working? That's weird. Oh, they're detached. Okay, see, they're all attached together. I'm going to detach them. And then I need to ungroup. And I'm going to grab this tree on the end. Let's just move it off to the side for a minute. Let's grab these all again. Let's bring them down and see if it fits. Still a little tight. So let's maybe grab the tree on this end. Let's go ahead and hit delete. Grab them again. Still a little tight, but it's, it's getting better. I'm liking it. Let's make this, um, I'm going to unlock the dimensions because I don't want to lose the height. I just want to squeeze it together just a tad move this over, grab all of these ones, super cute, same thing, let's unlock the dimensions, let's skinny these up just a tad, maybe about right there, and then let's grab this tree and we can add this tree right there in the middle, we could even make it a little bit bigger if we wanted, something like that, there we go, now it's going to wrap all the way around, 
Um, I could even just make this one a little bit closer so that it's closer to that tree once we wrap it. Let's move this out of the way for a quick second. I'm gonna grab all of them and I'm gonna do a line to bottom so that we make sure that all of these tree stumps at the bottom are all aligned. So now if I were to try and cut this right now, it's gonna cut every single thing. So if these trees are one in front of the other, then it's going to cut really weird and we don't want that. So I actually have to weld this so that it will cut around the entire image. So let's go ahead and click weld. It's gonna take a while because there's so many different layers that are um, separate right now that we are welding all together. So give it some time to weld. There we go. It took a while, but it did it. So here's our weld basic cut so that it's not gonna cut, because what was gonna happen, let me just zoom in here just so I can show you guys. We had so many separate trees, one on top of the other, that if I wouldn't have done that, it would have gone in here and it would cut this tree. I don't wanna do that. I just wanna cut around this, like this, and not cut through this tree because I don't want it separate to this tree. I want it all as one. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom back out. We're gonna go ahead and add the trees down here just cause I wanna see how it's gonna look. <clears throat> I'm gonna grab the whole holy night. And I was thinking of doing something that goes across the whole sky. Maybe something like that. Yeah, let's group these together. And then let's try and stretch it just a tad. Isn't that cute? That's adorable. I'm gonna change the color of it so I can see it a little bit better. So cute, I'm gonna love that. That's adorable. I don't need this basic square. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide it. And now I'm gonna click make it. Now you guys may be saying, hey Emma, the, um, the vinyl that got sent is not long enough to cut this. That's totally fine. We're gonna do a crazy workaround. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but I sure am going to try. Oh, and you can see something else here. These were not attached. That's why they're all coming across really ski wampus. So let's fix that. Let's go hit cancel. <clears throat> and what I need to do is with these letters, they're all selected. You can see all of them here. I'm gonna go ahead and just click weld. And now they're one thing. So they'll all cut just like this. <clears throat> and this is where I need to decide what color I want. I think that I am going to either do this one color or another. But if you wanted to color, if you wanted to cut two separate ones, then you could go ahead and just change this. Let's just change it to blue. It doesn't really matter what color. And then that way, when you go click make it, it's going to show two different mats. So you can see this mat here, and then you can see this mat here. But if you wanted it all cut one color, then you could definitely put it as one. You could either change this back to black so that it would cut on the same mat, or you could uh, move it over. But I think what I wanna do is do it all one color. So I'm gonna go back. And I'm gonna change this to black. I'm gonna make this completely my own and I'm actually going to etch this into the cute little jar. So it doesn't matter what color vinyl I'm going to use because I'm going to put the vinyl on, I'm gonna quickly etch it, and then I'm going to take the vinyl off. Now to get what I want, I'm gonna go ahead and unhide this basic cut because I actually want to cut this basic cut I want these cut out of it um, so that I can wrap this all the way around and then put the etching on because I want these trees etched into it and I want this to be left glass and I want these words etched into it. So hopefully this will make sense as soon as I print it. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab it all. I'm going to click attach. I don't think that's gonna work. Yeah, that's gonna work. So see how it looks really funny now? So it's gonna cut all of these things out. It's gonna be kind of a pain to weed because we want to make sure we're weeding out um, what we don't want showing and keeping what we do want. Um, but hopefully that will all make sense as soon as we go to weed this and apply it onto our mason jar. So let's go ahead and get this cut. All right, you guys, I'm totally cracking myself up because I am making this craft totally my own. I am totally switching it up, but honestly, I'm improvising. I'm using what I have. And when I was playing in Cricut Design Space and I saw how cool that would look, as either black vinyl or an etched. I have to try etched. I think it's gonna be so cute. Okay, so this is my glow in the dark SEI tie dye spray. I have no idea if this can work, but um, I wanna try. So I'm gonna try and just set these right here in the middle. We're probably gonna have to do one side at a time. Shake it up and then just spray it. Ooh. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that there 
and let those dry and then I'll flip them over and I'll do the other side. I have no idea if it's gonna work, but we're gonna try. Okay, now I need to get my long mat. This is the 24 by 12 mat. We're gonna use that today. And then honestly for this, the best thing to do is to try and find some vinyl that is as long as we have. If I didn't, then what I could do is I could get two pieces of vinyl and put them together, but then you're gonna risk having that line and the etching cream could seep through it. So I definitely wanna find a piece of vinyl that's, I wanna say that was 14 inches long um, so that I make sure that it's gonna wrap all the way around this. So let me see what I have in stock that could work. I think I found something that might work. It's a star mask. Hmm. Do you know what? That might work. I'm gonna use my star mask. Okay. That should do it. A lot of people use this kind of like a, like for this purpose and they can use it for like stenciling and stuff. But for today, I'm gonna use it to help me etch my bottle. About like this. So I want material face up when you're putting this on your mat because we want to cut the material. We don't want to cut the carrier sheet underneath. So just like that, let's load it into the Cricut. Let's get it cut. While that's cutting, part of the instructions were to paint the lid um, a blue color. So I did find this midnight blue. And so I'm gonna go ahead and paint the lid this color. Ooh, this is a really pretty color of blue. This is midnight blue. And it's Anita's all-purpose acrylic is what I'm using. And you can definitely see the silver through this. And that's kind of where you need to pick and choose, like how do you want it to look? I kind of like it rustic looking. I kind of like being able to see the silver through it. So I don't know if I'm gonna do a second coat. I might leave it just like that. I think that's kind of cute. I'll go ahead and just set it down and we'll let it dry. Okay, friends, it's done being cut. So now we have to see if it worked. Fingers crossed, toes crossed, everything is crossed. If you guys watch my other videos, you know that I like to cut along the cut so that I can save this rest of material for later. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna keep this for later. And now we weave this part is a little frightening because there's so many intricate pieces that you need to weed. I'm gonna take off the exterior first. So this middle rectangle section that's left over, that's what's where we're gonna be wrapping around this so that we can paint in the etching. So, few pieces of advice for you guys. First, be patient with yourself because weeding that was very intricate and you have to go nice and slow. There is plenty of pieces that I accidentally missed, which is fine, I was fine with it. I had to sit there and think, okay, is it worth me messing this whole thing up to grab that one little piece or can I just keep going on? And I think the end result is awesome. It still worked out great. 
So number one, be patient with yourself. Number two, have some scissors handy. So like this is one big pull. As I got too much, if it falls back down, then it can actually start picking up your other pieces because it's sticky. You don't want that to happen. So have some scissors nearby so that you can cut off the excess and then keep going without it risking coming off. Um, and then the last piece of advice is weed on your mat because this is sticky and it just helps give you that extra hand. So I didn't have to worry about holding this down. Um, I was able to just leave it right on this mat <clears throat> and weed it. Now we just need to take it off the mat now that it's done being weeded. Kind of curled it up a little bit, it's fine. Get this out of the way. And then what we need to do is we need to get our transfer tape and we need to pick this up so that we can put it onto our glass container. So I've got my transfer sheet tape right here. You guys have seen in my other videos, I am a definite reuser. I reuse and reuse and reuse and reuse. Um, and I do that on purpose because I wanna make sure that I'm being frugal with my supplies. I think I mentioned in a past video that this transfer tape is literally like a year old. I've had it for a very long time and it's because I reuse it. And something like this, honestly, I kind of wish that I had a piece that was already used because you don't want it to stick too hard because when I try and pull it off, some of those pieces may stay on this. So sometimes reusing it is actually beneficial um, and can help. But in this case, it's gonna be a brand new sheet. So I'll just have to make do. So you guys have seen me do this in the past. Um, you can either start at one end or you can, I like to do the taco method every time I do this. So I'm just gonna start knowing that I need to go there about right here. Perfect. So really, this is gonna be really easy to pull up. What's not gonna be easy is all of these intricate details down here in the trees. So that's where you need to make sure that you really burnish it really well. I got this tool from my craft source. I love this one because you've got your plastic on one side, you've got your felt on the other. I love using it for projects like this because sometimes when you're pushing too hard with the plastic side, it can actually like rip and ruin your vinyl. Isn't this fun? I mean, yeah, I'm not using the same vinyl that they sent me and I kind of made the image a little bit different, um, but that's what's so fun about these mystery boxes that you can get from my craft source is you can kind of pick and choose how you want to use it. Put your creative spin on the craft and on the activity. And truly, I had no intentions of switching this up. None at all. Like, I was totally ready and prepared. Uh, I was even going to go buy all the paint and all that. And I was like, you know what? This would be kind of fun. And then as I was playing with you in Cricut Design Space, and I saw how cool that black looked, I was like, man, that would look really cool if it was edged. So I got to try it. I got to see how it's going to look. I think it's going to be great. So you guys hopefully have noticed I have done, I've burnished the front and the back. And then we're gonna try and peel this off nice and slow. Um, and what I like to do is I like to use um, like gravity uh, to help me. So I'm gonna put what I want to stay on the bottom and I'm gonna pull this up from the top. And what I do, if you guys see my videos before, I try and pull this as tight as I can, like completely flip back because I feel like it definitely helps lay it and keep it down on the transfer sheet, on the transfer tape. This actually is working flawlessly. I am very lucky right now. <laughs> that was perfect. What? Awesome. Okay, now we need to get this onto this. And I'm hoping that we can just do it in one swoop and not have any issues. But we need to get it prepared. To do that, we're gonna get some alcohol. And then I, I have like a microfiber sheet that I use because we need this completely clean and free of any debris, as I dump it all over, before we can try and place anything on it. So I'm getting all of my fingerprints, any dust, any of that stuff off of this. Nice and clean. And then of course, you want it completely dry before trying to put the transfer on it. Okay, this is gonna be scary. 
we got it, we can do it. Let's see, I think the easiest way to do this, I mean, I can either have it sitting up or I can try and lay it down. I feel like laying it down might be easier. I'm kind of scared, man. Like maybe I could just, this is, this is flat down right now. Ooh, I think I might try this. And then just set this right on there. Um, I can't believe that that worked. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep on rolling. Perfect. And now I just need to try and get as many of the bubbles out as I can. I'm telling you guys, I wing it, don't I? You guys watch me. I make mistakes for sure, but I wing it. <laughs> so if I was like applying this, I would be, I would definitely been a lot more careful. Um, because this would be permanently applied. However, I'm not permanently applying it. I am just putting it there so that I can etch it. So what I need to do is I just need to get all of the, you can see these air bubbles. They don't matter if they're up in here. They just matter if they're close to where you're gonna etch. So if I see any air bubbles, like in here, there's an air bubble. Let's try and get those all out so that the etching cream doesn't go down underneath the tree. Ooh, I kind of went down a little bit there. Do you know what? It's okay. I'm totally fine with this. I think it's going to turn out adorable. Okay, let's try and take off this transfer tape nice and slow. And same method. You want to make sure that you kind of have it at a tight angle so that the Star mask will stay, and the transfer tape will come off. And it's okay if you see like right here, it's starting to come up. I'm just gonna rub it down a little bit harder and then try again. There we go. Sometimes I'll use my weeding tool to help me. Whew, that was rough, but we did it. Hooray. Okay, so now it's all off and now we just have to go through and make sure that there's no air bubbles. You can see that that one was a little bit crooked so I'm just gonna grab my weeding tool and straighten it out, something like that. And just make sure there's no air bubbles because the etching cream that we're gonna use definitely can get underneath if you've got those air bubbles. Same thing with the bottom, make sure it's nice and tight. I mean, I didn't do a wonderful job, but it's gonna work, you guys. Same thing with the words. Let's make sure there's no air bubbles where the words are. Looks good. I think we're ready to etch. So little story behind me etching is that was one of the first things I tried. So for my husband's 40th birthday, I made these really cool beer mugs um, that um, had personalized names for each one of his guests. And then um, he has a really cool uh, toast that he likes to say. And so I, with the staff, I cut out the entire toast put it on a mug and then I etched it. So it's actually really cool. In fact, I'll run go grab a mug so you guys can see what it looks like. All right, you guys, it's time to etch. And I wanted to show you what I was talking about earlier with my husband's birthday. This is what I etched onto the back of the mugs and then the names on the front. So super cute. It says, cheers to the ones that I love. Cheers to the ones that love me. Cheers to those who love the ones that I love and to those who love those who love me. So pretty cool. All right, let's get to etching. So let's make sure that we've got our gloves on. We've got our etching cream. So how do we do this? We are gonna use this um, Armour Etch. This is what it looks like. I just got it at my local craft store, but I know you can buy it on Amazon, so I'll make sure that I have it linked below. And then all I do is I just get like a paintbrush and I'm just gonna paint it on, like this one. This one will work just fine. 
So you just wanna paint it on the areas that you want etched. It's really quite simple. So you're gonna grab some and you just wipe it on. And you don't wanna to push too hard because you don't wanna push any of this up underneath um, the vinyl. And truly, like I said, you could use any vinyl. You could use, like if you have a vinyl that you, a color that you never use, like this would be the perfect um, project to use that vinyl. You should wear a mask probably. You should probably wear goggles so that you're totally safe. So don't do as I'm doing. I'm just trying to put one coat on the entire thing. You wanna try and do it as quickly as you can so that it's processing all at the same time. A lot like when you're outside bleaching your t-shirts. Okay, so I've got one coat on all of the trees. So now let's go back through and do the words. Okay, so the entire thing has one coat now. And now this is where you can kind of just go through and what I try and do is do it a little bit this way, a little bit this way, a little bit this way. And I'm again, not putting any pressure at all. I'm just trying to mix the stuff around. Okay, it is all etched. It's so, so pretty. It turned out awesome. Now a few things. Your etching cream is gonna say that you should only etch it's like one to three minutes. That's probably what you should do. I am saying whenever I've etched, I just feel like I have to have it on there at least five minutes um, and sometimes longer to actually have it fully etched and um, be light enough that you can see it. So um, once I left it on for about five minutes, a little bit longer, um, I went and I rinsed it out in cold water. I don't think it matters if it's cold or hot but I did cold water and then I, I rinsed and rinsed and rinsed and then I pulled off the film and don't be afraid as you're peeling off the film when there's water on it and it's wet you're not going to see the etching it's going to look like nothing's there don't panic just be patient keep washing with your gloves on um, once you get it all off then you're just going to dry it with some paper towels and then you're going to love how it turned out isn't that so cute oh holy night I love it so cute and such a fun twist on the project. So that part's done. So what we need to do is get some fishing line and we're just gonna line it through the little stars and through our cute little moon there. And so that they'll hang right inside just like that. And then we're gonna glue it to the top of the lid. And that's so cute. Okay, let me go grab some fishing line. All right, so my husband doesn't have fishing line. I thought for sure that he would. So I have to be creative and I have to come up with something that will work instead. And I've got this type of twill material and I just need some of that thread. Like if you pull on it, ta -da, that's what we're gonna use today. In fact, I think I'm gonna love it because it's very like crafty looking. Yeah, I think I'm gonna love it. Like. This is, I am totally improvising and I think it's gonna turn out great. You just gotta do what you got around the house, right? Perfect. Take me some of these threads. Ta-da! Totally improvised and it's perfect. Cute. And that will just hang in there. Improvise with Emma. That's what we should call my channel. <laughs> Cute. Obviously, if you don't want to see these lines, then you need to use fishing wire. My glue gun here. We're just going to glue a little bit of the top. And then I'm just gonna put it right there inside the lid. You guys can see that, just like that. I'm just gonna let it lay there while we let it dry. And then do the same thing to these other ones. And I'm doing some longer than others so that it will hang down a little bit lower. The inside's 
inside of this is not pretty by any means, but it's exactly what we need. Just little pieces of glue to get them to hang. I'm gonna wait until that fully dries before I'll try and hang it. Okay, I think it looks pretty dry. The moment of truth. <gasps> oh, look how cute. So cute. Oh my gosh. Let's put it inside. Adorable. We need to get the glitter that came with the box. Which is right here. So this is the Starcraft Miami Flash Glitter. So if you guys didn't get the box, at least you'll know what you can go and buy. And I will make sure, like I said before, that I will leave um, a link in the description. Yay, let's pour the snow in. So cute. Look at the snow. Okay. And here goes the lid. That's adorable. <laughs> Look what we made. It's so cute. Oh, holy night. And it's all etched and you've got cute little snow on the bottom. Totally improvised, but I think it turned out adorable, you guys. <laughs> like this is just proof that you absolutely can just use the stuff that you have around your house. I think it turned out adorable. I think even like a cute bow on top to go with um, the thread that I used inside would be really cute. Love it. All right, you guys, that is it for today's tutorial. What did you guys think? I think it turned out super cute. And honestly, I kind of wish that I would have had my kiddos help me. I think that they would have loved this project. And I think it would be so cute to maybe put some cute little figurines or something at the bottom. So kind of fun. I hope you guys had fun with me. I hope you learned something new. Um, even if that just means a go with the flow, go with what you got and just have fun. Don't take yourself too serious and just have fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this craft. Um, if you guys liked this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Um, make sure that you subscribe. But the most important thing, you guys, make sure that you ring that bell so that you will get notified anytime that I upload a new video. Until next time, we'll see you later, friends.